This happened to me a few weeks ago and I'm still receiving treatment at a psychiatric clinic. I don't know why this horrible incident happened or whether it was my fault or just bad luck. I hope the people who hear this story can help me find an answer. I remember the day clearly. It was a weekend afternoon and I was lying on the sofa watching TV, enjoying my leisure time. But then the doorbell suddenly rang, though I wasn't expecting anyone. I jumped up in surprise because there were hardly any people who would visit my house without telling me first. I went to the door and asked who it was, and surprisingly, I heard a friendly voice answer. Hey, it's Shane, your friend? I paused for a moment. Did I have a friend named Shane? I couldn't remember, but he kept talking. We were in the same class in elementary school. I finally opened the door and looked at his face. I didn't really recognize him, but I thought that because so much time had passed, he looked different now than he did back then. Then he pointed to his temple with his finger. There was a very big and ugly scar there. He said, don't you remember me? When we were in elementary school, you stabbed me here with a pen. It really hurt. But you didn't even apologize to me. You were so bad, right? <laughs> I was startled for a moment, as if I had been hit on the back of the head. I didn't know why. Maybe it was because of guilt, or because I was so shocked. A previously lost memory came back to me. I said with a trembling voice and a slight laugh, but you only bled a little back then. Why is there such a big scar? It couldn't have been from that, right? He took a pen out of his pocket. It looked old and rusty. I realized that it might even be the pen I had stabbed him with back then. He looked at the pen for a moment and then wiped his tears. Then he said, You don't know how much it hurt back then. I tried not to forget that pain because I have to get revenge on you. I was afraid that if I forgot that pain, I would lose my desire to get revenge on you. So whenever I couldn't remember the pain well, I stabbed my temple so that I could feel it again. And now there's a big scar. While staring into my eyes, he stabbed his temple with the pen. He screamed out in excruciating pain while clenching his jaw. Then he held the bloody pen up to my face and said, It's always the same pain but I never get used to it. It's always painful. Well, it's your turn to feel it now. I've stabbed my temple 180 times in 15 years. You have to be stabbed 180 times too. His eyes were filled with rage and madness. He held the pen high and stared at my temple as though he was aiming the pen. I tried to close the door quickly, but he came close to me and grabbed my arm. I grabbed his hand and pulled it off of me and pushed him away. But he pulled me down and we rolled on the floor and fought. Luckily, I got on top of him and punched him in the temple. He screamed in pain and writhed. I held him down and shouted for help loud enough for the neighbors to hear. The neighbors called the police, thankfully, but Shane continued to yell at me. You better settle your debt quickly! The more time passes, the more times you'll have to get stabbed! This debt will never go away! The interest will keep accumulating! <laughs> the police arrived shortly after and arrested him, and after that day, I hastily moved to another city. However, I still live every day in fear fear that he might show up at my door once again. Sometimes I think about attempting to contact him and asking for forgiveness. I want to end this fear and live comfortably, but when I think of the horrible scar on his temple and his insistence that I pay my debt, I vow again to avoid him forever. I have never really told anyone this story, however, I've been meaning to get it out in some way for the whole world to know. I recall it being a cool summer afternoon in 1991. I don't remember the exact date when this all happened, but I remember what I would see on the streets where I lived. My family and I are a family of five. Myself, my mom, my dad, my sister, and my baby brother. We've always been a friendly and generous family. My family is Mexican, and when we moved, we did not have much at the time. We moved into an apartment building that was right next to another apartment building in February of 1990. 
The apartment was not much, but we had to get by with what we had at the time. The first two or three months living in that cruddy apartment was alright, however, we did struggle at times in those few months. I was playing by myself outside this one day in May because I was bored of watching cartoons and wanted to actually get outside for once. I was around the backside of the apartment playing catch with a football with my uncle from my dad's side of the family. I remember it clearly because while we were playing, I couldn't help but notice the strong, horrendous smell of what seemed to be urine. My uncle seemed bothered too because he walked towards me asking if I needed to use the bathroom, but I replied with a simple no and that I was okay. When we were eating dinner that night, as we were eating, I glimpsed outside the window where you can see the outside of the other apartment. In a window of one apartment, I saw a brown-haired man who looked to be middle-aged and had his arms full of boxes and bags walking towards the dumpster. The man violently threw the stuff into the dumpster, and when he threw everything, I saw what looked like a blood-covered, severed hand fall out of a black bag. The man immediately picked up the severed hand, placed it in the dumpster, and speed walked back to the front of the other apartment. I thought this occurrence was strange, but didn't even think to question whether that was a real hand or what he could have been carrying. I did see some other strange things happening with that man, but I don't want to get too deep into them. Perhaps some other time or in a different story I will. After that night, a very foul odor of what seemed like urine and roadkill would stink up our apartment for almost a year. It went on for so long, and this was one of the worst memories I have. I even suffered some trauma from it. One night, as I was trying to fall asleep, I started to hear heavy drilling, like a power drill being used. The sound was so disturbing and eerie that I get goosebumps even just thinking about it. I got up to look through the kitchen window to see who was drilling, but when I got to the living room, I saw my dad crouched by the window. I asked my dad what he was doing, and he came and quickly pulled me over and had me crouch beside him. He then told me something that made my entire body turn cold. There's a maniac living next to us. We sat there for about 10 minutes in the pitch dark of our living room, and although it was only 10 minutes, it felt like an eternity. The drilling finally stopped, and my dad and I both peeked through the window to check what was happening. We saw that same man comb his hair back and leave his place. I glanced through the window of his apartment and saw something that made me know there was something seriously wrong. There was a young boy passed out on a bed with the TV on in front of him. What bothered me the most was the fact that this boy was completely naked. No clothes at all. Not even underwear to cover himself. My dad told me to go back to my room so he could contact the police. I curled into a ball on my bed. Even with my eyes wide open, I could not think of anything else but the uncomfortable image of that unconscious naked teen on the bed. I ended up falling asleep after worrying for some time about what would happen next. A few months later, I was on my way back home with my grandma after staying with her. She was bringing me back to my apartment, and when we got there, we saw a swarm of police. An officer directed my grandma to park beside our apartment because they needed space for whatever they were doing. I was scared and holding onto my grandma tightly as she took us both to my place. She opened the door and my mom pulled us both into the room. I ran towards the living room window to see the swarm of police outside. I saw boxes and containers being dragged out from the apartment. And then I saw that same man being put into a police car, and I could swear I saw him look back at me. 
We moved out of our apartment complex a week later to stay with my uncle because my parents both agreed that we did not need the drama going on to ruin our lives. I am older now, and I later learned that the man who had been arrested was the serial killer Jeffrey Dahmer, who was known to have taken the lives of 17 men. He would not only kill, but would drug, cannibalize, and do other monstrous things to his victims. It's hard to see the world the same way after that traumatic experience. But what I've learned is, you should not trust people too easily.